So I want to call this just kind of like tips and tricks for generating random variables. Um, so last time we talked about a way that was really easy when I could generate the CDF of the random variable, but in practice, um, you know, uh, I may not know the CDF. So one thing that you can do there is called the rejection method. And so the idea here is super simple. So uh, here's the process. I draw the PDF, and this only works when the PDF is um, bounded, right? So let's assume that the PDF is between 0 and A. And let's suppose that I can bound it inside a box from 0 to B, OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate um, I'm running out of pages here. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to generate um, u uniform on 0a, and I'm going to generate y uniform on 0 to b. Right? That's basically like saying I'm shooting a dart at this board. Right? It could land here or it could land here. Right? It's like basically a 2D random variable. And then the idea is that if um, I guess this is kind of under my head here. The idea here is that if um, y is less than or equal to the PDF at u, then I should keep that. I'm going to say that's OK. Keep. Otherwise, try again. So it's a very simple method. It's basically saying keep on shooting darts at the board. And if I get a dart that is under the PDF, then I accept it, and then this is my value. Otherwise, if I shoot a dart and it's outside the range of the PDF, then I reject it. So super simple. Um, one thing that makes this a little bit unappealing in practice is that you know I may have to shoot a lot of darts at the board before I get one that I'm willing to accept, and so my random number generator may take a variable amount of time to generate a random number. So uh, maybe not the best way of doing it. There are ways to improve it, but this is kind of the simplest idea. Um, the next one I want to talk about is some specific trick to generating Gaussian random numbers, right? So, um, you know, we know that the Gaussian is one of those ones that has kind of like a, a PDF and a CDF that are a pain. So the second one is generating Gaussians. Because you'll notice that, um, for example, MATLAB and Python, I'm sure, have a extra random number generator that generates a Gaussian random variable that basically has zero mean and unit variance. What's going on under the hood of that? So um, here's one method for doing that. Um, so first I generate um, u1 and u2, which are independent uniform random variables on 0, 1. Then I let r equals minus 2 times the log of the first one, and theta equals 2 pi times the second one, and I generate x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. And it turns out that x and y are independent normal 0, 1 Gaussian random variables. So that's kind of cool. That's like saying that if I generate two uniform random variables, I can then automatically get two independent normal random variables, Gaussian random variables. And this is the process that I take. So it's possible that something like MATLAB's randn command is doing this under the hood. Um, and to prove this work, you could use some of the transformation methods that we talked about in a previous lesson, where I could work through what is the distribution of this, what is the distribution of this, what is the distribution of that. I'm not going to crank through all the math, but that's the way that it works. And if I instead don't want to have a normal 0, 1 random variable, what I could say is that um, if we want a Gaussian um, with mean and sigma that are not equal to 0 and 1, then I can basically just transform um, a Gaussian that has mean 0 and sigma equals 1 to get a new Gaussian that has the desired mean and sigma. Right? We kind of talked about how the transformation of a Gaussian is a Gaussian. So that's pretty handy. 
And then the last thing I'll say is that, you know, suppose that for some reason, instead of wanting independent random variables, I wanted to have correlated random variables. And so real quick, um, you know, to generate correlated random variables, Generally, this involves using the covariance matrix between the, the random variables, right? So for example, um, let's suppose that X and Y are jointly Gaussian, and they have uh, you know, these means, and I have the covariance matrix, which we talked about when we talked about the joint Gaussian in the first place. That involves the correlation coefficient and the two Oops, I guess the correlation coefficient is over here, sorry. And the two standard deviations. Right, so this is kind of like the, the setup. Then, um, you know, without going into a lot of detail, kind of what I'm going to do is I want to rotate the um, kind of equal probability ellipses to match up with these correlated ellipses that I know have to occur when rho is not equal to uh, zero, right? So. How do I do that? Well, this is a little bit hairy. So if I let um, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the sigma matrix be given by lambda 1, lambda 2, and the corresponding v1, v2, right? Then what that means is that I can write sigma like uh, an eigen decomposition, vd V transpose, where this has the eigenvectors and this has the eigenvalues along the diagonal. And then how do I generate um, correlated random variables? Then if I let um, A and B be uh, IID Gaussian mean zero sigma one random variables, say I did that with the previous method, then you can show that I can transform those into correlated random variables with this formula, right? Then these have the desired joint distribution, which is correlated. Kind of conceptually, what, what I'm doing is I'm taking something that used to have like equiprobable contours like this, and then I'm rotating it to get these correlated random variables, right? That's kind of what's going on. And again, you can prove that that's what's happening if you were to do the transform methods that we talked about in that one lesson. So again, probably unlikely that you're going to have to do this, but it's good to know that it's possible to do.